twice, I hear you. So today we're gonna to be building this template in Studio One. Now, if you don't know what a template is, a template's pretty much just a pre-made session with, with tracks and plugins on it so that when you wanna record or make a song, you don't have to build a session every time from scratch. So let's get into it. First thing when you're building a template is you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and set it up basically as a new song. So we'll go ahead and set it up. Uh, we're gonna go empty. Now you can see here, they do have some templates for you to use, but today we're just gonna make a vocal template. So we'll call ours Tem, we'll just name it Template. Okay, so now once once we make our session, we're gonna have a blank track. Now I know what you're thinking, oh man, where do I record everything? What do I do? How do we get started? So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go up to track. Now the first track I like to make, this is gonna be our beat track. So this is the track that we're gonna put our beat on and make sure it's beat, one audio, and we're gonna make it stereo. So there's our one B track. And then now I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard to bring up the track menu, because we're gonna make some more tracks. Now I'm gonna make, this is gonna be called record track. So we're gonna make a track that we're just gonna record into. Make sure one audio, and it's gonna be, I like to make it red so we know, and it's gonna be mono, because we're gonna be working with, for our interface and microphone, anytime you're working with microphone input, it's always gonna be mono. So there's our record track. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit T again. And now I'm gonna make, We'll go make these blue, purple. We'll make these, and eh, we'll give it light. We'll give it this. Now I'm gonna go six audio mono tracks. So now we got our tracks. And we're gonna go to our mixer right here. Cause now what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and kind of rename these. Now I wanna rename this. This is gonna be main one and main two. Now if you, if you don't know how to rename these, you can just double click on the writing right here and we'll let you rename it. We're gonna name this one dub stack and then dub dub with no space stack then we're gonna go ad lib one and now ad lib two now we have two tracks for our main two tracks for our dubs and stacks and two tracks for our ad lib now i'll show you why this is important later but this is basically how you want to set up your vocal template i'm going to go ahead and change this color right here because i really don't like it so now we got our track set up so now what we want to do we want to hold down our shift key and we want to make sure from our record tracks all the way to these tracks. We wanna highlight those. We're gonna right click on the track here and we wanna create add bus for selected channels. Now this is gonna be our vocal chain. Vocal. Now next thing we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and add two more buses. So add bus channel and add bus channel. So now why I like to add these two bus channels is because when I use reverb and delay, you don't ever really wanna put delay and reverb directly on a track. You always wanna use reverb and delay through busing. And if you don't know what busing is, go see my video on busing. I'll leave a link in the description. So now I'm gonna go ahead and rename this reverb and I'm gonna name this delay. Now that we got all of our tracks, let's go ahead and let's start with our effects. Now I'm gonna work from left to right. So now on our B track, I don't like to put anything or any effects on our B track. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn it down. I like to put it at about three. And the reason why is because usually when you get beats or MP3s, they're usually pretty loud. So this kind of will just help level them with the vocals. So now we're gonna start on a record track. First thing I like to do is come down here and we'll use stock plugins today, whatever comes with PreSonus. You're probably not gonna have the same plugins as I do. So we'll just use what comes with the program. So first thing I'm gonna put is a compressor. Now with this compressor, we're gonna go ahead and and set our levels. So first thing we're gonna do is start with our threshold. Now for the threshold, I like to do about negative 32. For the ratio, we're gonna do about a 3-4. For a knee, we're gonna go about 5.3. Attack, give it a fast attack, about three. Release, do about 4-7. Then we'll get a little low cut. So about, about 46, that's fine. So now we got a little low cut. So now that's our compressor. The next thing I like to add is an EQ. So we'll come over here, plus, and we will go ahead and add a Pro EQ. Now we're just gonna use this Pro EQ to kind of shape some vocals, roll off some bass and some highs. What we're gonna do, and now what I like to do is start with our low cut. We're gonna roll our low cut to about 92, so that's about good. And then I'm gonna give it about a 24 decibel cut. For a high cut, we're gonna go about 12 and use about 12 right here. And then what I like to do is just turn on your low frequency and just kind of give your low frequency a three decibel boost right in the about 220, 220 region. Probably about, yeah, about 280. Now we have our EQ and our, just to shape a little bit, we can take a little bit more off, it's about 11. Now the next thing I like to add is a gate. So now for our gate, we're gonna give it a threshold of about negative 42 and we're gonna give it some reduction. 
and about minus 55 reduction. Why we do a gate is just, if you got an artist and they're making noise in the background, this will kind of just help take all that background noise out. So you just have the vocals and that's pretty good for the record track. Now on the other tracks, we're gonna go ahead and add a compressor to them. And how I like to do this is just, just put our compressor on. Now I'm gonna set the threshold at about negative 24, about right there. Ratio will go about a four, three, and our knee will leave our knee. So our attack, we're gonna give it a fast attack and a fast release. And we're gonna gain this till about eight and a little bit of makeup, just a one decibel makeup. And now what that's gonna do is just give us a little boost on our vocals. And now what I like to do is once we get our one compressor, all of our tracks need compression. So we're just gonna click and copy it over, copy them over. Let's go ahead and set up our dub and stacks. Now what I like to do on these dub and stacks is we're gonna go ahead and add chorus. Now I like this chorus because what this does is for your dubs and stacks, it just makes it sound a little fatter and a little wider underneath the main. We don't want it to be loud, we just want it to be under the main and we want it to be a little wider. So first thing with our chorus, we're gonna use a preset. I like to use the preset backing vocals. So we're just gonna go backing vocals. Now what I like to do once it's on backing vocals is adjust this a little bit more. So we're gonna turn up our delay to about 40. Our depth, we're just gonna turn it down a little bit to about 32. And our stereo width at about 17. All right, so then after we get the chorus, we're gonna go ahead and copy it over to our other dub stack. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our ad lib track and we're gonna set up the EQ on the ad libs. So we're gonna go PreSonus and we're gonna go to another Pro EQ. Now for our Pro EQ, I just used the low cut and the high cut. So we're gonna go ahead and put this off 468, about 460. Now we're gonna go over here to our high cut to about 2.35, 24 cut, and we're gonna give this a 24 cut. And in your low mids, now I like to come over here to the mid frequency and just give it like a little bit of a, a two decibel boost at about 1.5. Now that what that's gonna do is give us our ad lib, our telephonic sound. So now once we got that, we're just gonna click on it, hold the mouse down, copy it over. So now we got our ad lib track set up. So now we're gonna go ahead and set up our vocal chain. So now our vocal chain, what this basically means is all these tracks right here between our record and our last ad lib track, all these tracks are gonna go and hit our vocal chain. Once they hit our vocal chain, then it's gonna go and hit our master fader. Then from our master fader is what you hear out of the speakers. First thing I like to do on our vocal chain, so we're gonna go ahead and add a compressor. Now this compressor, I know you're thinking like, oh, but you already have a compressor on these tracks. Why are we doing another one? Now this compressor isn't for boosting. I put the compressor on these tracks for boosting. This compressor is just what we call a cleanup compressor. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna set our threshold to 24, about 24, and we're gonna set our ratio a little higher this time, so about 3.5. So now our attack, we're gonna give it a fast attack, and we're gonna give it a faster release, and we're just gonna gain it about a decibel, 1.5 decibels. Next thing I like to add after the compressor, we're gonna go ahead and add an EQ, and this is just gonna be our cleanup EQ and shaping EQ. Okay, now on this EQ, we're gonna go ahead and mess with some of these parameters. First thing we wanna do, low cut, we wanna put this on 24, and we wanna make this about 105, I like to go about 110, 105. And then our high frequency, we wanna go about six, and we wanna go till about, about seven, roll off 7K, all right. Now on our low frequency, we're gonna minus about five, five two, that's fine, around the five is good. And frequency about one, 150 area, yep. Kinda helps us take some bass off. Our mid frequency, now we're gonna go ahead and put our mid frequency in our mid frequency. Then we wanna go ahead and give it about, now we wanna give it a 1.72 boost and about 1.5K. Our high frequency, we wanna go about minus four at about 8.7K. And then we're just gonna tweak our high mids. This is gonna be minus three. And then our high mids, we're gonna boost about minus three at 5.7. So about 574, and that looks good. Now for our low mid, we're gonna bring this down about 144, and at about, and that's good. Now if you want, you can just go ahead and copy, pause the video and copy my settings real quick. What I like to do is between these, go ahead and take your gate and then just copy it over. And then look, we're just gonna boost these up because we're still doing plugins. So now on our gate, so now we're gonna open our gate and we're gonna just boost this a little bit more. So we'll put it about 37 and on our reduction, we're just gonna bring it to about 42, perfect. And that's good around the gate. Now after a gate, I like to go ahead and put a channel strip. Okay, now on our channel strip, we're gonna put the compressor about 27, 
28, you can even do a 30. And then we're gonna expand till about 50%. We're gonna come over here on our EQ and we're just gonna give ourselves a little mid boost. So on our high, we're gonna go about 4.2 or 4.5 is fine too, 4.5. So we're gonna give it a gain and then we're gonna roll this till about four. The 4K region, we're gonna give it about a four decibel boost and that's good. And then we're gonna gain this till about five. Now the next thing I like to add on our channel strip is a multiband, multiband dynamics. And now what this is, is a multiband compressor. So this is basically a compressor in an EQ. So you get to select what frequencies you want compression on. It's kind of a lot to uh, tweak on this. So let's get into it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our tops. So for my low mid, we're gonna put at about 45. And then the top, this one's gonna be about 91. This is gonna be about 530. And then this is gonna be about 43. So now we're gonna start with our lows and we're gonna adjust our thresholds, okay? So now each band has its own thresholds that we have to adjust. So let's do this real quick. We're gonna start with our low. Now for my low, we're gonna give it a ratio of 18. So we'll go 18. Keep the high thresholds where it's at. And then our ratio at a four, four one ratio. So next on our low mids, we're gonna go minus three, two. Okay, then we're gonna give this a four and we're gonna gain it about two decibels. Okay, now on our mids, we're gonna give this about a 27. We're gonna give this a four ratio and we're gonna gain this and we're just gonna leave the gain. On our high mids, our high mids are gonna have a minus 21 ratio, a ratio of four, and we wanna lower it just a little bit to about three. Now, last but not least is our highs. We're gonna give this about 27. We're gonna give this a ratio of four. And we're gonna minus this about five, five four is fine. Uh, we'll gain this about, actually we'll gain this about three. So then we're gonna come over here to our globals and we're gonna give this knee about one five, that's fine. We're gonna gain this about four, just to give it a little boost. And our mix is gonna be about, uh, 55 is fine. So 55 for the mix. And that's my multi-band. All right, and then our last. So now the last thing I like to throw is just one more EQ. And what this does is just my shaping EQ. So we're gonna give it a low cut of 44. And our low, then we're gonna come over here to our low mid and we're just gonna give it a little boost at about 740 Hertz. So about, yeah, 730. Yeah, that's fine, that's good. And about two, so about 2.6 gain at 730 hertz and that's just gonna let the mids just kind of punch through give it a little high at about yeah 12 is fine at about 11 and that should be good on that and now that's just kind of a shape and a booster now my last thing i like to do is we're gonna go ahead and add a de -esser. now studio one doesn't actually have like a de -esser plug plugin like how we have these so there's a trick that we can do to get a nice de -esser. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right click, we're gonna add a bus channel, then we're gonna hit the arrow key, and we're gonna go mixing, and we're gonna go de -esser. Now, I like to just take this multi-band that comes with the de preset and just drag it onto the bottom of my EQ. And now we have a de -esser. And then come over here, and then just drag this down a little bit more. And now that will get rid of some of those sharp S's. And then we can come back to our track right here, and we can hit remove because now we don't need it. So now we're gonna go ahead and add our reverb. Now for reverb, we're just gonna hit the plus sign right here. We're gonna go to our presonus and we're gonna go ahead and use our reverb and room reverb. And we're gonna go ahead, I like to use just cathedral. Cathedral, I don't really touch anything on it. I kind of like everything the way it is, perfect. And then on our delay here, analog delay. Now for your delay, I like to go half. So we'll put that on half, give it a feedback of about, yeah, that's fine, 20, 25. And that's pretty good. That's pretty much all I do for the delay. Nothing too crazy. And that's good. We can give it a little high cut, a little low cut, and then just a little high cut. That's good. And that's good. That's all you need for the delay. So now what we're going to do, now that we have our reverb and delay, we have to activate them. So we're gonna go ahead and activate it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this, see the inserts. We want our sends. So now this is what our sends are. And our sends are for, is for these reverb and delays. So the first thing we're gonna do is add some sends. We don't want it on the beat, but we do want it on the record channel. So we're gonna go reverb and we're gonna go delay. 
Now I like to put the reverb out minus 26. Yeah, 26 is good. Our delay, maybe about 35. We don't need a lot of delay. Now the reverb in these, what I'm doing right here is this, this meter and this bar right here controls how much reverb of this reverb goes into this track. If you're like, oh, my vocal's too dry, it needs to have a little bit more reverb, you know, you can come in and turn it up. I like to keep it about 25. So now that we have our levels, we're gonna go ahead and keep those. These are good for our mains. So we'll go ahead and hold our mouse and copy it over. These are our delays. And we're gonna go ahead and put our reverb on our dub stack. Now on our reverb and dub stack, I like to go a little higher. So we're already at 25. So we'll just go and put it about 20. 20 is good. Now on our delays, we're gonna give it just a little bit of delay and we're gonna give it till about 31 and about 31. Same thing, you can copy this over on the ad-libs. Now on the ad-libs on the reverb, I like to go ahead and give it till about, uh, 20 is fine. All right, so we'll give it about 20. And that's pretty good. Once we get these across to our last ad-lib, what we wanna do is we wanna come back to our record track and we're just gonna hold down our mouse on our reverb and we're gonna send that to our vocal chain and the same thing with our delay and just send this to the vocal chain. So now my last thing I like to do, now the last thing I like to do here is we're gonna go on our main and we're gonna just go ahead and use a limiter. Now with our limiter here, we're gonna go ahead, gain, we're just gonna give it a little, just a little boost, about 0.9 ceiling we'll leave it at zero threshold we're gonna leave at three and our release so and then we'll put this yep yeah, about 2.6 so now that's pretty good for our template so now what we want to do after our templates done is we want to go ahead and we want to go file and you know save it so you have the session and then after you save it you're gonna go ahead and click file save as template now you can go ahead and give this template a name what we made is basically a vocal template. So if you want, you know, you can name this vocal template or name it whatever you want. And you're just gonna hit okay. So now, every time you come and make a new song and users, and now you have your template right here. Every time you use, you're gonna just come over here, hit template, give your song a name. That's all you gotta do. And boom, here's your template. So now real quick, how to use this template. We're gonna get into it. So now just with this template, uh, be in mind, I didn't add auto-tune. Um, you know, PreSonus doesn't come with a built-in auto-tune. Studio One doesn't come with a built-in auto-tune, so you're gonna have to use your own auto-tune. So now the first thing you're gonna wanna do, you know, is put in your beat. You know, you'll drag your beat over to your beat track. So now once your beat's done converting, you can see your beat right here. Now me personally, you can see the waves are kinda small. We can go ahead over to right here and we can just turn it up so we can get a better idea. Now this doesn't turn up the volume. All this does is it just turns up the wave, the waveform so you can see them better. So now once you have your beat, we'll mute it because I don't want it to play. This just hypothetically. So now when you're ready to record, what you're gonna do and how this is gonna work is you're just gonna arm this track. Now let's say, okay, you wanna do your first main verse. So you'll go ahead and you know record. Now, once you're done recording, what you want to do is just take it and drag it to the main. Now, I have two of each one in case you want to punch in. So now, what that means is like, so you did this one. Now, let's say, you know, you, you said about five words and now you want to punch in. So we're going to hit play. We'll give yourself a little room. We'll come back and boom. So now, you know, you'll continue off where you left off. And then now, once you're done with that, you'll go ahead and drag it down. You know, you can clean it up so your words don't overlap and vice versa. So, you know, now you want to punch in some more. You'll come back to where you just last punched in and boom, you'll keep going. Now you record again. Now you can come right here, take your slicing tool, bring it right here, come over here and bring it down. And now you don't need this. So now you can delete. So now let's say you're ready to do some stacks. So you'll go ahead and record, same thing. You just record. You know, when you're done your stacks, grab it, the stacks. Now you're like, okay, I'm ready for my ad libs. And now once you're done recording ad libs, you know, you come down here and you're gonna drag to ad libs. And now that's how that works. So that's basically your template. If you feel like I left something out, you want me to go into detail more, or there's something you wanna see, go ahead and leave me a comment. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.